Wow. Wow. Super Chat Catch Up EFAP Mini Nando episode where we covered Nando vs. Movies EFAP MCU 272. Bring in the Muppets. Do it. Mm -hmm. uh, it will save the MCU. Look, because we were just talking uh, before we uh, started our recording here. We were just having one of our chats and we were mm -hmm. talking about how Eternals 2 got, uh, it's not, not going to be in development. There's no way they're going to do that, uh, that Captain Marvel 3, whatever. <laughs> um, boy. And here we are. You might say the MCU about is how... dying. No, the Muppet Cinematic Universe is going to be great. Well, yeah, you can just fix that by putting the Muppets in Eternals 2. That'll I'll, fix it. That'll do it, lads. We got it. Well, we're just going to read out some messages and respond to them. Much Ooh. like we always do. Let's do that. Wow, First one. Where are you from? Uh, Montana. All oh, right, I've been to Montana. They do talk like that there. Mm hmm. And the first message says, "Howdy from Montana." What a coincidence! Oh wow! wow. Hello there, fellow fellow Montanian. Montanite. Well, <laughs> are you Would a you fellow be a... Montana person? You're not. No, not me. No. You're lying to them. Oof. No. Exposed no, no, no. immediately. Well, you see, that's where that's what that just shows how much you don't know about Montana. Montana is not a place. It's people. It's uh, uh... well. It's more of a general outlook on the world. It's a feeling in your heart. It is a feeling in your heart. Would you rather be a Montanian or a Montanite? Hmm. I don't know what the, what's the second one. Montanite? Oh, is it, or is it, is it just trying to figure out like which one you think is the better name? Yeah, hmm. if you were from Montana, hmm. uh, which in a way we all sort of are, would you rather be called a what, the Montanian or a Montanite? Uh, I think Montanian, I think. Just want to say thanks for content, and I dread the new Avatar series. Yeah, that didn't go so well. People, people. Oh are not yeah, happy. though. Right. At this point, it's uh, all out, isn't it? Seasons. Yeah, they've got two season two and three's coming. happening. So That's all everyone the whole hates thing, it. The whole show. Yeah, they got the whole story. So how and does that happen? Do, uh, it must have been successful enough by uh, by their metrics. I guess so. Yeah. You've got to have a lot of trepidation, though, you'd think, knowing that you, you, there's uh, got to be that guy that says, yeah, yeah, I get technically it was viable, but guys, everyone hated it. What do you think they're going to do for next season? Um, I don't know. It does seem like they, they assume, yeah, well, they said that, but I mean, they watched it this time, so they'll watch it next time. We'll have to Maybe. ask someone if we have a guest on who sees like seasons one and two and see if they can tell us about the changes. Because, for example, right, there are so many people who don't even know that Halo season two is out. Um, uh, yeah. Meanwhile, like people, I barely know, and I watch it. Yeah, we we are those people. We are the people that when we're talking to people, they'll be like, "Well, what's the difference in season one and two? And be like, "Oh, actually, well, I can. Yeah, uh, there there are some differences. Like, it's just as abominable, but like they they actually seem to have realized like, oh, we should probably have." more explosive action we probably involve more references there's still key jangling of all kinds but there's still all kinds of mistakes like would you say that season two has any evidence in it that they've reacted to the criticism of season one not from any meaningful perspective in, in terms meaningful of way. the narrative or the characters no well, if they, you're gonna ask me which one's worse i don't know what to tell you they've definitely reacted to it but there's a lot of the the, the writing suffers from a lot of the same problems that surely stem from similar fundamentally bad ideas about how to write stories uh as well as you know not giving a fuck about like anything to do with faithfulness by way of adaptation but it's interesting oh, yeah. to see what a re because you know when when there is a reaction it sometimes seems like people can mistake it for the fact that they reacted at all should be taken as a positive rather than no, uh, no. how how did they react how they did reacted they in the most cynical way like possible it's like oh we just oh, need yeah. to throw in some more a, a little bit we'll more I think. reach episode and then we're good and yeah we throw in a shitty down. reach episode and they'll clap mm -hmm. like seals you're being played people <laughs> you're being had you're being bamboozled you are i would say that the um i mean it's been brought up every once in a while and it's not it's always good to sort of revisit it as an event that happened but before the first sonic the hedgehog movie came out and they had that fucking abomination in the trailer they went back and they changed it, and now everyone loves it. Well, now, now everyone it's a successful won. franchise that has yes. a spin-off show about Knuckles coming out. Or you could be an asshole who ruins Halo. Which way, <laughs> Western man? Hmm. <laughs> Just want to say thanks for the content, and I dread the... Oh, wait, I read that one. <laughs> but yes, Prey 2017 for the love of Jeebus. What a great game. 
I do hear it's a good game, yes. I think you guys would... Freen, did you play it? No, not yet. I have it. Uh, I would I'll play highly it recommend day. it to the both of you. Hmm. Hi, Rags. Hello! We share a birthday this Monday, so happy birthday to us. Also, I got my trio of vinyl figures last month, and I love them. Oh, I'm really well, glad that you like them. They uh, turned out excellently, and uh, also happy birthday. Yeah. Uh, Marvel's five options. One, pay people at the door to watch movies. Two, lots of boobs. Three, build a time machine. Four, pray five more boobs. This is I a mean, workable uh... plan. Workable plan. I do like boobs, but there's something about the tone that would probably shift that would no, not feel quite MCU-ish. Boobalicious tone. Yeah, the MCU only... Yeah, it, it doesn't... Yeah, it doesn't go into that territory. Make it lame fitting. and make it gay. Word spoken by a wise South Park character. A wise South Park character. When are we expecting right. the next and... South Park thing? Uh, I don't know. I don't think we ever know exactly now because they have uh, they've been doing seasons, but they've also been doing the specials, which mm. seem to they they basically announce it a week before hey, it's coming out. Yeah. Uh, howdy, fellas. Recently bought MCC and just played Halo CE to reach for the first time ever. Had a blast, but I got to ask: Are four and infinite worth a shot? Uh, four is not infinite. It I barely infinite. played the multiplayer for a little bit, but I know a lot of people who started the Infinite campaign and did not finish it. No, I didn't finish it, uh, which was a bit surprising, uh, but not at all when you think about it. Uh, infinite is kind of a weird one to recommend because I think it's got a good core, and I haven't played it for a long time, and I've heard that it's gotten a lot better, but it's also done. It's uh, finished. They're moving on to the next Halo. Uh, and then Halo 4... Uh, no, I, th that game has a pretty terrible multiplayer, <laughs> um, pretty bad, uh, and campaign is like, oh man, there's, there's like a big old asterisk with any recommendation there, uh, I feel it is way safer to just play up until Reach, and then stop just play there, the and that yeah, Halo. Just, I mean, you've got <laughs> five games to play, Halo 1, yeah. 2, 3, ODST, and Reach, that's five mm -hmm. games that are all great, so. Yep. And, and of course, it's a neat, uh, it's a neat bow for the story. It's it's full circle. It's it's done. Nothing happened afterward. Uh, Master Chief is drifting out in space. Uh, he'll be woken eventually, but not in any of the three four three games that you don't need to play. That's right. Halo Five did oh. have fun multiplayer, but it's a very different experience than what you would like if you enjoy Halo multiplayer. Typically, in the Bungie games. I wouldn't say that there's any reason to assume that you would enjoy Halo 5. That's how different it is. Yeah, and of course, we cannot recommend the Halo TV show. Don't do that. No, 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 no. never. Don't do it. Spare no, yourself. No, no. Do not do it. Stay away. Um, I still think that play, getting a bunch of friends together, hopping on the MCC, playing you know, your grab bag of fun, goofy modes and trying out all the different stuff with friends is it's still the way to go it's still really fun the games hold up really well first one maybe not so much yeah. but and you can still play the... you know infinite you can still play multiplayer through the mcc for uh the old yep. games so it's always an avenue mainly halo 3 but uh still you know it's, it's yeah available both to you. halo 2 reach 3 and then all of the firefight stuff that they've added like flood firefight they added and you can play the firefight in both Halo Reach and Halo ODST. Uh, so it, it, they're both good. It's like there's still, I think there's a lot of Halo content in those games. They're jam packed. Yeah. Just the, the different stuff that you could do with the forges and the custom game types. Legitimately a blast. And it's super fun and crazy. And when I get with friends and we just play the crazy modes and stuff, we have a blast. We have a really fun time. Uh, you see someone who's lost, confused. You get them moving, and you keep them moving until we put this place behind us. One way out. This is the way. Oh, that's good old, uh... Ah, oh, it is. That's yeah, that's Kino. Yeah. And or. That's right. I'm gay actor Michael Douglas. Did you know that Iron Maiden's song Man on the Edge is based on my movie Falling Down? I, I had no idea. Neat, though. Interesting. Uh, hey, Moore, I just wanted to say thank you for taking me up on the request on EFAPing Nando. I'm looking forward to you lads giving it a good ribbing. I do tend to often find times uh, organize some EFAP episodes around you guys' recommendations. It does happen. And, um, yes, 
I think someone told me something along the lines of like, check out his top five. And I think at the time, it might have been a gaming stream, and I was like, oh, I'm getting tired of everyone's solutions for the MCU. But he, the person was like, no, seriously, you, you got to see it for like the number one. Because it's, it's just so <laughs> fucking stupid. It's like, okay, that is pretty funny. Like, the Muppets. Uh... Uh, guys, The Phantom Menace returns to theaters for its 25th anniversary this May 3rd. I'm going to see it since I was born the year it was released. All right. Yeah, I guess you never had the chance to see it in theaters, so that is true. I mean, that'll be happening with the Lord of the Rings stuff. Sometimes theaters will play those movies in, uh, yeah. in the cinema, and you should definitely check those out. Because, boy, what a, what a series. And be, to be able to see it in the theater, extra. This one says, according to Nando, you are his most hated, and or the we, according to him, he believes, I guess, that he is our most hated enemy. Oh, not even close. Like a, I know. Don't it, flatter it, yourself, Nando. <laughs> well, I was just gonna say, like, it must be a thing to a feel to get covered up by EFAP, but like, we we cover all our people. Like, we don't take it that personally yeah. with any of the. We, we really don't. Sometimes, but you got to be special to get to that point. You are uh, Nando's a funny dude. Uh, he has he has yeah. funny things to say. He's 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 yeah, in he's he, totally in the chill column compared to people like Movie Bob or absolutely. Know, or We'd have Nando on and talk about stuff, and he brought Nando. You've you've brought us joy, and that's something that cannot yeah. be said for many of the people we cover. I got my vinyl figures. They are absolutely adorable. Rags' cute little cinnamon roll tail made me giggle. Hi, Rags. Also, hi, Fernando. Nice. Hey, I'm really glad that you enjoy them. They turned out really awesome. I really got mine did. stacked yeah, up over very here. Very happy with them. Very pleased with them. Um, 33 months, Pog. Nice. Some membership. Thank you very much. Oh, that is a while. That's uh, almost, you'll have his three year anniversary soon. Hmm. I picture the MCU as a rotting corpse, which is continuously molested by Disney. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. Kind of, yeah. That's a good way to describe it. Just, uh, a shambling, I think a shambling zombie is what, what I would call it. Because it's sort of like, it's not dead, it's still alive, mm. but at the, same di at the same way, it's a terrible, like, undeath. That kind of zombie the, a, in the movies where they walk into stuff? The kind of zombie in the movie where they walk into stuff, and you recognize who it used to be when they were alive. And it makes you extra sad to know yeah. that that person is gone, but their flesh is still shuffling about in this terrible state of existence. Uh, Disney stock has lost 200 billion in value in its last two years. The market is up 20% and at an all time high. It's a disaster, and the shareholders ought to be suing. Hi, Rags, Muller, and Fringy. Hello. Uh, I mean, yeah, could, especially over the last several months. To not be, you know, positive is not, not a good sign. Mm. Um, yeah. I wonder how much two billion is though relative, like how much they've dropped as a percentage. Yeah. In the last few years. Please, someone do a review on the man from Uncle. Every frame is a painting. It's got amazing style, awesome soundtrack, solid story, good pacing, fun stunts. One of my favorites. I haven't I haven't seen seen it, it. But I've not seen it. Yeah. Perhaps I should. Uh, he looks the like man a man from Uncle. Wait, the man from Uncle would be my cousin, right? Oh, ho, ho, ho. slow mm -hmm. genealogy a humor rags there. Pun there for you. Yeah, I'm just having a good time. He looks like a slightly less retarded organized chaos. At least his voice is better. Just started the game Hades. It's fantastic. Check it out. I shall. Um, yeah. Uh, his voice is definitely better than. I mean, it's not old, a high uh, bar. Robert, but <laughs> not, not a high bar. No, it isn't a high bar. Uh, hey, Massives. Have you guys seen Warrior? I watched it recently and loved it. Tom Hardy is always great. I have not seen that. I've heard of it, though. I have not seen it, I no. I haven't heard of it. Also, Mola, why does Alan Wake 2 suck? Haven't played it yet. Uh, oh, and that's a full stop. So I guess if you want to Oh, did you see... finish it? No. <laughs> I, oh. uh, I did the one stream. Metal finished it. So yeah, if you want to know what I thought of it, is the, the, in my playlist for playing games on the on my homepage playlist, the the tab, you'll find a playlist for games, and you'll find Alan Wake 2 in there. Um, it's, it's a rare occurrence where the writing was just so hideously awful and the game was so boring that I was just like, I, I ain't playing this anymore. Uh, too many fuck-ups in the script to the point of, uh, for lack of a better term, letting me know what I'm dealing with, and I would rather, I just didn't want to spend my time on that. Which I think you could make the point of like, so how do you decide which ones you're going to spend your time on? It's like, I'm not entirely sure. 
like Gollum it's versus feeling. Kong. You know, I gave up on King Kong, but I kept going with Gollum. It's like, I, I don't know exactly what it is, but it, 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 there is an enjoyment factor that can come from cringe, and some cringe is boring, some cringe isn't. Um, well, some cringe is like. I'm glad you stuck through with Gollum. That brought me. That made Gollum's me joy. Gollum's quirks were creating some of the funniest moments, right? Like, you know, like Suicide Squad Killer Justice League, there was, there was nothing in that that reached Gollum levels, but that was simultaneously almost like fascinating to see what they were, they were doing, how they were building that story. But then you come to something like an Alan Wake 2 where they're already dealing with fucking nonsense, crazy illusions and dimensions, and then they, you know, they don't care about the writing. And there was all these mechanics that I found really slow, boring, and lame for video games. I was just like, I can't do this. Yeah, fair this. enough. A strange thing, but yeah, uh, you could watch Metal's playthrough as well if you want to see what he thought. He went through the whole thing. You can find that on yeah. the old YouTube's. There's been some funny clips I've seen from Metal of his playthroughs of the game. He suffered. What an experience! Greatly. Yeah, oh yeah, he suffered. The suffering was guaranteed. Also, play little nightmares, high rags. Hello. When it comes to director's visions versus studio injection, the old adage "trust but verify" is generally good advice. I assume that means trust in the artist, but, you know, look over what they've made. I would say so, yeah. You yeah, have to have enough say. trust in them to give them the project in the first place, but you want to make sure, I mean, it's a lot of money that you've got right now. Yeah, it's the projects, the so push and pull that exists okay. and always will and always kind of, in a way, should. Wow, don't, let's, don't let Chris Stuckman hear you saying that. Oh my god, I'm so scary. Uh, this one says, hi. Hello. Uh, hi, hey. hi, Hello. To summarize and clarify point five, instead of making small connections, it should start be stop writing movies in a vacuum. Um, stop writing movies in a vacuum. As uh, in, you mean that the writers should talk to each other about what they're doing? Yes, they should. I agree, yeah. The, the thing is, that's, that isn't what he said. Uh, that's, the, that's the problem. You, like, this person's point is much... Like, if you just keep in mind the other continuities, like, yeah, of course. 100%. What he said was, we need to have um, Valkyrie getting a call from Captain Marvel in Thor Love and Thunder, where she just says something like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll help you out with that next time. And then we see them ha helping her out next time. Because that's, yeah, like, that's continuity. Crap. That's nothing. Yeah, that's, that's just not at all where your sort of value should be. It's not about that. It's about recognizing the consequences of your story in a world that's running irrelevant of you. You need to oh, you see in Spider-Man Homecoming. Oh, well, there was that film, Avengers Age of Ultron, where there was, like, Ultron tech uh, that had been... And then the Chitauri tech that would have been left behind after Avengers. There's a whole bunch of this stuff. What do they do with it? Where does it go? What if somebody wanted to grab it and then sell it as weapons? It's like, oh, yeah, there you go. You're, you're leveraging what came before to tell a new story. You're not yeah. writing it in a vacuum mm -hmm. in the sense that you realize that you are set in a world that is affording you many opportunities for uh, new stories. Yeah, this is a realistic outcome of something that has occurred prior. We can explore this in a film. Yep. Unfortunately, I think we're more likely to get a Lizzo show than a Kino show. Um, I mean, at this point, you probably unless it was Tony Gilroy handling it, you wouldn't want a Kino <laughs> live show, right? Uh, yeah. Also... EFAB on my birthday, Yahoo, hi Rags, hi Fringy, and Hello. of course, hi Mola. Hello. Hello there, EFAB. Excited to finally send my first super chat after years of supporting you folks. Smiley face. Quick question. Have any of y'all seen Has Been Hotel on Prime? If so, what do you think? Any expectations? I don't know anything about it. Yeah, I mean, I haven't seen any of it, so. Doesn't look like it's my kind of thing. Uh, I haven't seen the Prime show. I watched the the like original pilot that got released on YouTube, but that was years ago, and I I don't remember much about it. Sorry All about I know that. Is <laughs> None of us have anything to say <laughs> on that one. And lastly, of course, hi rags. Hello. Hi, I'm gay actor Michael Douglas. Did you know oh. that? Oh wait, I read that one. I'm so sorry. Or unless they sent it twice, it could be either at this point. If you look at Venonat and Butterfree, it seems like they were originally meant to be related via evolution before being swapped. Oh, I know about this, yeah. Um, as far as I know, one is supposed to be a moth, the other is supposed to be a butterfly. It's uh, just with the designs, people believe like it might have been that they switched them over because there's a lot of connections. Let me find... Hmm. Uh... I, yeah, I, I guess. I feel like it's still appropriate what they end, ended up with. One is the moth, one is the butterfly, so. You see Let's this see. image right here? 
Yeah, that, ma- that makes see, a lot of sense. Yeah, that one um, makes, yeah, I can definitely that see that. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the arms and the feet. Yeah, that is interesting. Yeah, when you go over the little details like that. Huh, interesting. Makes you I've wonder. I've never noticed that before. It does, especially if you're designing, you know, 100 plus of these critters every generation. Then, you know, what changes get made along the way. And it makes me wonder, what are the ones that got left on the cutting room floor? Well, yeah, there's got to be there's got to be a deluge of uh, unused Pokemon, like con- the ones that never went past the concept stage. There's got to be thousands of them, thousands Probably. of drawings of uh, of Pokemon that will never see the light of day. Uh, do do do. Without the end bait or after credit scene, directors for the sequels would have to actually watch the movies to know how to better connect the stories. Well, I, mean, I mean, that's that a really sad a reality. Yeah. We, we joke about it all the time, but it's absolutely like I feel like if I was in charge of the MCU and I found out one of the directors of the newest film hadn't watched every film in the MCU, okay, not even that they hadn't watched the first of the sequ- you know, the thing they're making a sequel to, I would want to shout at them. I think. Yeah, like this is. What do you think I'm paying you for? This is unacceptable. And if the writer, like, if I, I would love to know what they'd say. It's like, why haven't you? And they do that thing, you know, that, that thing they say where they go, I, d- I wouldn't want it to cloud my own judge. I want to be able to create, you know, in a free space. I don't want to, I don't want to well, watch someone else's movie. And... Sequel, my man. So exactly. You like, original. are you insane? Have we learned nothing over the past 10 fucking years? Do you want to maybe pay attention? Also, give yourself a little bit of credit. Watching a movie isn't going to destroy your capacity to be creative. Especially yeah, when you're, they're you're likely terrible. drawing on experiences of watching movies to write the mm-hmm. script for the movie anyway, so... Uh, no way have all 14 seasons of Red vs. Blue free with ads, much like YouTube videos uploaded by Rooster Teeth, lol, and of course there were no seasons after 14, which frankly is a good run. It was uh, on the YouTube free with ads. I guess talking about how there's... There are there. I know that there's more than fourteen seasons, but I think that's when uh, it's always regarded as having been over in terms of the quality. Right. But uh, I guess now there will be no further additional seasons at all. Rooster Teeth is no more. Yep. Uh, which is better written, and which would you rather rewatch, Man of Steel or the Marvels? I'd rather rewatch the Marvels because it's shorter. It's shorter, yeah. It's and uh, it offends me less shorter is I don't care about Captain Marvel, but I do kind of care about Superman. Yeah, so. Man of Steel pisses me off more, way more than yeah. Marvel's does. Yeah. Uh, oddly similar problems despite length difference. Uh, as for oddly similar problems, I don't know about that. <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't say that. I think uh, Man of Steel is a very... It's kind of a unique specimen. The Marvels is very much a good example to point to of this is Marvel Sludge. This is what Marvel yeah, this Sludge is, the movie is you don't make. as a phenomenon. Whereas Man of Steel is uh, just unique in, in its badness. It, it really is. Through and through a Snyder movie, though. Yes. 100%. Uh, Nando sounds like Chris Stuckman on cocaine. Um, that's desperately what Chris Stuckman needs. He needs a bit of energy. Imagine him on cocaine and he's like slightly faster. Oh, yeah, like 10%. <laughs> yeah. You almost think that you've just accidentally like control scroll wheeled in your yeah YouTube he's like he's like playing wow. just a little bit faster by accident you're like I this feel... doesn't sound quite right oh I had it on ten percent faster I feel incredible wow oh my god wow <laughs> <laughs> calm down Chris uh, you know what improved the MCU every post credit scene is a cameo from the dawn yeah oh yeah well, just his daily life when... just catching yeah. up with him what he's doing they're just not willing to fix the MCU so they're not willing to do that. It's like the other uh, ones with, uh, what was it, Mr. Peanut Butter? What was the name of the, oh, no, the, you remember who Beth shot in the, the what was his name? Oh, Mr. Poopy Butthole. The, yeah, Mr. Poopy Butthole, when there was a little post credit where he's like, uh, you know, I got a GED, <laughs> and I, I, I got married, I got, had a couple of kids. You just catch up on what he's been up to. Yeah, he was at the end like of the that. season. Uh, yeah, that's just right. Just updates. <laughs> Uh, do, do, do. Hey, Morley, when I suggested streaming a Mario RPG, I actually meant any of them. Any would be fine. Hmm. Oh, so like Paper Mario, a Thousand Year Door. Or, uh, or the Mario and Luigi one, which I hear that uh, the Bowser's Inside Story is, is the, the one to play, that that's the really good one. Yeah, okay. But uh, Paper Mario, uh, Paper Mario, a Thousand Year Door is getting re-released pretty soon. 
so well, I'll be picking well. that up. Uh, Fringus Frongus. Could you impersonate Mr. Mr. Pee Pee from South Park yelling the P? Or the P? Uh, oh, oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, damn. Uh, I gotta try and... Ah, uh, he, he's, uh... Ah, uh, he's he's got like a high pitched voice, like ah, oh, it's a the P, something like that. He's he's uh, I think he's Italian. That's the best you're gonna get. Do you uh, remember that episode? Is is it the water park one? Yeah, they go to the water park, and Kyle is frequently disgusted to discover that people pee in, P, uh... in the pool, and people pee in the uh, shower, and that people don't wash their hands after they pee. And then uh, they did a thing where they said to him he had to drink some pee to, like, balance out the pressure. Yes. <laughs> he needed to go underneath to, like, change a water valve or something. And then as soon as he finished drinking the pee, they got rescued. I think that was a <laughs> Abyss reference, actually. Like, and then, yeah, having it be funny, of course. <laughs> and then he got rescued. Uh, I saw this video a few days ago and thought this would be perfect for EFAB. Glad to see it caught y'all's eyes. Yeah, I was made aware of it through a super chat, I think. Um... It was a fascinating video. It was. it was a fascinating video, full of many interesting ideas that I've never heard before. Bravo. More after Arkham City, you're going to take the opportunity to finally play Origins and Night. They're not perfect, but better than Suicide Squad. There is a good chance of that. I've been slowed a bit on my playing of Vidya. I'll, uh, I'll try and get make sure I complete. City's been a lot of fun. Uh, Godzilla... Yeah, Godzilla minus one was ten million and made a hundred and ten million worldwide, a hundred times their budget. Uh, Wait, that's that's not, ten no. times, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, I yeah, that they was had like a, a they had like a fourteen or so million dollar budget. Uh, I think I I'd read some line where the director was like, "Man, I wish we had fifteen million. Uh, yes, and then right. it ended up doing super well for that budget, and everyone loved it. And it has set the standard know, uh, for Godzilla movies. And it was also my favorite movie that year. And I loved it. Something the director said was he didn't want to tell people how much it actually cost because he didn't want people expecting him to make movies for them for that cheap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ba -ba -ba. It's the year of the dragon. Year of the long. Ooh. Good. Mm. Oh, ahead. that's good. Thunderbolts won't be bad because of budget. It'll be bad because it's a Suicide Squad ripoff when Thunderbolts wasn't that at all in the comics. It'll be bad because it's going to be badly written, first and foremost. Yeah, that'll yeah. be bad, yeah. Uh, if Warner Brothers wants to make money, they should make a parody movie of Batman, call the movie The Man, and watch m money start to roll in. This is all the fucking Arkham memes on the Arkham <laughs> subreddit with man, 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 and stuff. It's great. <laughs> Not sure how much money it would make, but it would be funny. Um, ah, three of my four favorite YouTubers, Missing Drinker. Much love from Australia, my friends. I always look forward to EFAP episodes with just the three of you. Oh. Oh, I'm very glad to hear that. I tend to throw him in every once in a while, here and there. Yeah, yeah. You will have seen him in between the time you made that super chat and now. Oh, I meant we tend to throw in the three man ones every once in a while. Yes. Yeah. Um,. But yes, we also throw in drinker every once in a while. Thunderbolts. You, we just had a Godzilla super chat. Our Godzilla little discussion was just the three of us. Wasn't Mel with it for that one? I was think, it? yeah, Mel was there. Uh... <laughs> Dang, he was so subtle. Oh, Mel. Sorry, I just Mel. picture him sitting in the corner, in like one. really small. Just like, hello. Don't worry, he'll never hear about this. No one will link him this. Oh, okay, that's good. Uh, bu bu I, That's right, I come out, uh, I, I come out even. Even Steven, because I recommended his Alan. You know, Rick's when, when you Houston. said that, Rags, I just had a visual in my mind of, like, the, the template of, you know, like, the EFAP template. And it was, it was you know, Godzilla's, a, it, it's just, there was definitely four of us. That's That was the image that was coming into mind. I just pictured yeah. getting dusted. You, that, you, you myself, <laughs> Mahler, and Godzilla. Mel got dusted. Uh... Fringy, yes, Fringy specifically. Watch the Larry Sanders show. Uh, I haven't heard of that. Is that like a stand-up comedian? I don't know, actually. What that is? Yeah, I've never not heard of it. Hmm. Um, the What Epstein Didn't Do Squad. Oh, I get it. Nice. The studios really should have taken a year or two off after Endgame. 
I mean, it, that would be. It's not even about well, making did, a gap. It's, it's a having enough off, prep. But it didn't, didn't do shit. They, they did have a year off because of COVID. They just don't. They didn't. They don't prep anything properly, and they don't give scripts the time right. they need, and they don't hire the right people. Like this is. Just well, yeah, because you know, problems. like, uh, Black Widow. Well, I guess they'd say that that's the example. Black Widow was uh, made before any of the COVID stuff had shut anything down. But I mean, a significant amount of them got delayed in production. That mm. didn't fucking help. <laughs> it didn't do shit. Uh, it helped Andor. It did, it did, but that's because I had a writing discipline on that show. <gasps> On 55, looking forward to hearing this in a year. Ha, you think yeah. you can get through more than two, 200 episodes in just a year? That actually Why? could be tough. That would be tough. It's not even just the episodes, right? It's the EFAP movies well. as well. Mm -hmm. And TV, catch-ups, catch yeah. Bit of gaming. The Muppets Christmas Carol is generally one of the best adaptations of the novel. Watch it at any time, be it Christmas or not, Michael Caine is good. True. I love a Muppets Christmas Carol. Very good. We need to watch A Christmas Carol and a Muppet Treasure Island back to back for any fat movies. That would be delightful. Mm. Oh, I thought you were going to suggest like watching that Christmas Carol and then the Disney uh, Christmas Carol and then finding like another one to watch. Oh, that would not be a bad idea. As Yeah, that would be a good idea too. Do you we want to keep the Christmas the, uh, the Carol Robert theme Zemeckis, or the Muppet theme? Uh, the Robert Zemeckis one. You, you know that one that came out like, I want to say like a decade ago. I think oh, Jim Carrey was in Jim it. Carrey, it was yeah. like... Um, yeah, one of those, like, it kind of like the uh, the Polar Express movie, one of those weird motion capture movies that he was messing around with yeah, back that's then. that's one, yeah. Maybe we could do uh, Muppet Treasure Island and Treasure Planet. Ah, uh, that's an idea. What do y'all think? We can have a treasure arc. <laughs> what do you think of something being woke, but still good? I believe it's a stupid take on some media, like Arcane, Spider-Verse, Invincible, Hot D. It's, I mean, it's, a lot you of know people, people mean. Uh, I mean, yeah, it depends on what people Ask them what they mean by woke. The problem you'll have is that some people would say that built into woke is bad. So woke but yeah. good doesn't make sense to them. But then some yeah, people will say woke, woke just bad. means, I don't know. Left-wing politics, vaguely. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I just don't find it a helpful lens to through which to view things by measuring quality, particularly when nobody seems to agree on what it actually means. I'd rather just talk about whether it's good or bad. Easy to yeah, have a conversation. you gotta start pressing people for that when they say it, because, I mean, if Arcane and God of War Ragnarok, if that shit's woke, then I'm like, I don't know, man, like, maybe woke isn't the problem, if that's how we're defining it. Like I said, it's, it's always gonna be down to individuals, so you just gotta figure out what they mean by it, and then, fine, if, uh, if they can have components you can actually see or verify in any way, like... You know, like, race swapping would be seen as a, something like that, but but then most people seem to agree that not... You know, like, Hot D had race swaps in it, but I, I don't think anyone's saying that the race swaps made the show bad, so... Yeah. But those characters were really cool and yeah, yeah. interesting and awesome, and I want to see more of them. And we will. And we will. Uh, hey, guys, if you ever have Meme on, could you have him say Allosaurus had never seen such bullshit before? No reason, just testing something. Well, he streams. Send him the message. Why us? <laughs> he yeah. says gaming streams yeah, and stuff. There's no way that we're going to remember that. <laughs> Gosh darn it. There's an interview However, with... Uh, thanks for the super chat, though. Of course, of course. I'm, I'm, that I'm, information. I'm, I'm, being, you know. I'm saying, you know what? You can, you can get the thing directly from him and the money can go toward him as well. I'm just saying that like it's, it's unlikely that we're going to be able to get the message to... We've got to get him on an episode for it. You know, it's, it's a bunch of rigmarole, but then I appreciate the it thing. If someone in chat reminds us, we might see it. Uh, there's an interview with Alice Cooper where he says, you, uh, when interacting with Muppets, you forget you're talking to a hand. He would treat them like characters. I could see that totally being the case. Like, when, when you're in the moment, just going with it. I mean, well, technically speaking, that's just acting the voice anyway. The ears, you know? Yeah. It's always funny to go online and look at the outtakes and deleted scenes from, like, Sesame Street and Muppets and stuff, where they will stay in character even though it's not recorded and it's not going to end up in the thing, but they stay in character. It's great. For the it. little flubs and the outtakes and the deleted scenes. Like some of the old, um, not, not just Sesame Street, but a lot of the old like PBS shows, when they would do extremely inappropriate outtakes, they would still remain in character. And so when the footage comes out, it's extra funny to see the characters saying those very adult things or saying it's a swear language. word. Have it on a talk show where he's like, you know, how how's your love life? And he's like, you can't ask me that. I'm on Sesame Street. <laughs> 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 it's like that. 
Uh, Muppets Lord of the Rings. Who is who? Who is the human? Go. Who is the human? What? Oh, like, like in Muppets, Muppet? there's often human characters. Um, oh. Who would be... I feel like... I feel like it would need to be a sort of straight man character should be the human, maybe? That's actually a tough one because mm -hmm. you want him to be a bit central, right? But to be fair, the, the team split up quite a bit. That's, yeah, that's what makes it. Because I was thinking each time I was like, oh, but they wouldn't be interacting with all these characters for a while. Or, oh, they, yeah, they wouldn't be interacting with those characters for a while. What if it was... What what if the human character was Christopher Lee in a Muppets Lord of the Rings, and he was just oh, still like, Saruman? Oh, 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 I thought you were gonna say like it's Christopher Lee, just real life Christopher Lee, and then yeah. I don't know, he's chilling out at home like reading, and then he gets transported. Oh, he could be the narrator, the reading the book, The Lord of the Rings, and they would use that as like a framing device for a lot of the story, like like idea. the grandpa and Princess Bride. He's reading us the story, Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Could work. Um, as for Let's casting, see, who I would mean... Kermit be? Who's Kermit? Would Kermit be Frodo? Uh, I was thinking either him or Aragorn. I think I would go with Aragorn before Frodo. Yeah. All right. Who is who would Gonzo be? Um, Gimli, right? Or no, Pippin. Oh, oh, I don't know. Only well, animal should be Gimli. Imagine, imagine if, uh, imagine if he was. Oh, born animal, there. yeah. <laughs> Animals gotta be Gimli, you're right, yeah. Um So let Miss Piggy. Arwen. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah there you we go. could do the Arwen Aragorn thing. Yeah. If we have Kermit as Aragorn yeah, and Miss right. Piggy as Arwen, we could do that. Uh let's see. Who's Rizzo? Oh. Hmm. He'd be hmm. one of the would he be one of the hobbits? Because he's a little big guy? He's a little guy. Um. He might be a good yeah, what about yeah. a web tug? <laughs> oh, <laughs> what about no. what about Gollum? What about Gollum? Ooh, Rizzo might be Gollum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think Sam the Eagle would be Saruman, right? Ooh, yes, absolutely. He'd be Saruman. Saruman the Bald. Let's see here. Uh, who, how about, okay, well, what about, um, uh, Statler and Waldorf? One of them could be Denethor. We, would we want to keep them together? Can we get them together through the Palantias? I'm trying to think, what's a pair of characters that we need to... Well, I mean, we haven't, we haven't done any for, uh, Frodo and Sam or Merry and Pippin. Don't see but, them I mean, doing those, see? though. <laughs> could you see them as Frodo and Sam? <laughs> it's weird because I can see them doing Saruman when he's at the top of the tower, making fun of everybody down below. Well, would you but want would you wanna... want one of them to be Gandalf and the other or Saruman? Maybe. Ooh, yeah, because they're like they were sort of bros at the beginning, but then they changed. Yeah, well, yeah, that's wizards. what I'm saying. Is that you could yeah. have them as a Sam the uh, Eagle. He was hard. perfect. Sam the Eagle is really good, though. Mm. Who would? Yeah, let's a pair of characters who could be. Do you think that we might want to take a creative about, detour uh, and make a character two characters instead? Make them a pair of what characters. What about Barmir and Faramir? But, oh, but then you would split them up. They would only have the one scene together. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Damn. Oh, yeah, it's hard. One. Maybe they are the people that. What if what if they're not actually characters in the story? As Christopher Lee is reading the book and telling us the story, Statler and oh, Waldorf what if, yeah, are what there if with him. making fun yeah. of the story and like they're they're just sort of ribbing on the story That's and an telling puns and stuff. That's probably what I would do to keep their like the original intention and their characters as you know up there in the gallery and in the the box seats, making fun of it all. Uh, we can do who would who would Beaker and the assistant. Uh, who Beaker and um, who's the scientist guy? Uh, I'm not oh, what's his super. Name? I can't remember everybody in uh, Muppets. Well, uh, are there any big ones that we forgot? Are we I figured out Fozzie. Who's he? Oh, Fozzie. He's kind of got the. <laughs> he would make a good Gimli too. Maybe. Yeah. 
But wouldn't it be funny if he was Boromir it would be, or something? It would... you know? <laughs> I think he could work as Boromir. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. That's probably enough, right? <laughs> I think that's I mean, enough. Yeah, pretty I much. Think I, think we've, I think we've given people a lot to I digest. I think we've gone above there. and beyond on this one, all right? We gave you what we could, what we tried. Uh, all right, don't put the Muppets in an MCU movie. Make the Muppets Avengers movie. I just want to see Kermit playing Iron Man. Oh, as in, like, don't, don't put the Muppets in the Iron MCU Man. instead. Kermit's just... too kind. Nice, I think. He's not that confrontational to be Iron well, Man. So I that's that's we'll be true. Captain America instead. Yeah, I think so. Closer to that. Really? I guess he could be like an Ant-Man type. Hmm. What if case, we started uh, throwing in Sesame Street characters into the mix? Would that change, like, Oscar as Iron Man or something? Yo, I mean, Oscar the Grouch could be Denethor if you wanted that. Uh, yeah, he could. He could. I was, I was just going to say I agree with the... Um, I, I don't mind the idea. Like, it would be a fun movie to make, but I don't care to put it in the MCU, you know? No, fuck no. No, no, no. A uh, bit of weird alt history. Big Bird was almost in the Challenger rocket, but he was just too big. Also, Yes, have... I know about this. Also, That have... would have been an awkward ep Sesame Street few episodes. Yeah. Uh, also have Willie Mac show join for the next Asani fab. Sure, if it happens. The, then there's no, like, oh, time's up, time for an EFAB on Hassan. It's more so just when opportunity arrives through discussion options and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, for all we know, that we, we may never cover him again. But, you know, who's to say? Uh, crispy Critters and God damn, I almost forgot what this Connor guy was talking about. Saving Marvel? Yes, that's what the whole video is about. Yes, it's about saving Marvel. He's full of ideas. He's an ideas man. Uh, didn't Obby and the Chief do a joke like this where Chief wrote Shawshank Redemption 2 Muppets Take Manhattan? It yes. Like something uh, that he would yes. Talk, yeah. I, that's yeah. <laughs> it's look, all right. It wasn't his best work. His best one was uh oh, I can't remember if it was called John Awesome. Like that was the name of the character, though. John Awesome was a <laughs> man like any other, <laughs> except he was a hero and stuff, and he killed aliens and stuff. Remember when we were kids, we wanted to see cool characters fight, like RoboCop versus Terminator, Batman versus Spider Man. Now I'm just sick of mashups. A little bit, yeah. Mm. They've ruined they've a lot ruined of stuff it. like that. They've ruined the multiverse. They've ruined all sorts of different stories and ideas. <laughs> they, they reckon that Kermit Spider-Man would say with great power comes great big booty bitches. That doesn't sound like a Kermit line. Mm, big booty bitches. It would be funny, though. It would be funny. Kermit likes the big booty bitches, but that's only implied. It's never explicit. Hmm the deep lore i mean he dates piggy so uh do, 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 do. mcu meets fraggle rock coming to you soon hi rags hey there's a crossover what if we put the avengers in the muppet and have them play the whole thing straight as they walk around in one two three sesame street 100 percent safe peak fire bro peak fire anything that's peak fire yeah. go ahead okay. any yeah if it's peak fire i'm all for it oh uh, finally caught a live show. Thank you for opening my eyes after TLJ shook me to my core. You and the Fellowship showed me I wasn't crazy. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. We all had a bit of a moment like that after TLJ. <laughs> I think we did. Are we crazy? It changed us. It, it changed us. We're better men. <laughs> uh, Total Biscuit said, Asylum is great even without the license. Suicide Squad, on the other hand, needs the license to even be noticed. That's true. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Tony Stark suit quote. Yeah, pretty much. You need the IP to be good, then you're nothing. That's the, the whole. Mm, you need to be good on your own. Probably, I mean, I'd be surprised if they make another game after this. Yeah. Nothing about this game is redeemable. I must have been talking about Suicide Squad. I think we did that <laughs> after the Nando thing. Yeah. Tony, man, you gotta. I mean, you can't do the live service stuff. I think people just people. A lot of people are getting super sick of it. Be you have careful. to do it really well. Yeah, you have to. You have to do it really well. You have to have a fun core gameplay concept, and you can't f humiliate beloved characters. <laughs> yeah, just you know, a little little fun fact for you, a little design philosophy statement. Imagine that you're in like the dev room. There's just this big, you know, plaque that says "Don't destroy everything." 
<laughs> like, oh, I thought you were going to say in the writer's room there was a big plaque that said fuck Batman. <laughs> there would have would have yeah. fucking been, probably. There would yeah. have been in that room, yeah. Let's think, fuck yeah, like, Batman. They would have had these sketches of like Batman with knives, like scroll, like these really shitty drawings of Batman being stabbed by Harley Quinn. Wouldn't that be yeah, funny? Yeah, there would was, be all um, of these uh, things of Harley Quinn with like hearts and flowers and shit around it. An autopsy of 2015 to 2025, and it's that format of like a police investigation with a you press a button and it does the slides, and each slide is like the death of a famous and beloved character. And it's, but it's like I mean, a crime investigation, point... and it's like what happened in this decade? What what was it? <laughs> <laughs> like, I guess they thought they were really hot shit to think like, yeah, we can kill the justice. We can do anything. People will really like that. Yeah, we're we're really good at this thing. I'm like, man, I don't know, guys. Uh, Fleekazoid had two clips of your stream in his Suicide Squad review. You're apparently the top streamer on YouTube for the game at the time. Out of the top five, including you, four of them were King Shark. Of course they were. He's the but least King annoying. King Shark is the, uh, yeah, least annoying. Least annoying, that's the best way to put it. That's gotta be crazy. They yeah. put all that work and effort into building these characters, writing them, voice lining them, and everyone just wants to be like, well, I don't know, which was the least annoying? I'll just play as that one. If that's not a fucking condemnation of your abilities as a writer, I don't know what is. Yeah. Uh, look up the box office for a film called Gooby. Yikes. Okay. Starring Robbie Coltrane. Box office worldwide $3,234. That's not great. <laughs> Pretty bad, actually. Uh, the summary is... 11-year-old Willie's childhood toy, Gooby, comes to life as a real-life six-foot-tall monster who helps Willie through rough times with hair-raising and hilarious adventures. Hmm. Aw, I feel kind of bad now. <laughs> That's, I, I, I imagine it flopped pretty badly. I've never even heard of it, so... 2009 it came out. But, uh, yeah, okay. Do the division has an amazing minimalist UI and is a four-player co-op PvP PVE looter shooter made in 2016. What's Rocksteady's excuse? Oh man, I don't remember the division being like minimalist. I don't it's like, remember, I don't remember much about that all. game. I remember it. But, uh, fucking numbers flying everywhere, bullet spongy yeah. enemies, all sorts. Of, I mean, I, the division is man, there had a very about the division that I do like. I really yeah. like the idea of like New York sort of wintertime Christmas after a, like there's there's a vibe there of like New York Christmas themed post apocalypse. Uh yeah. but goddamn shooting enemies with a million bullets that just look like regular people and them not dying fucking it, throws you off. In terms it committed of one of my, my terrible sins of I fucking hate bullet spongy enemies. I, I hate yeah. it. It's 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 yeah. one thing if it's a boss and it's supposed to be a long, drawn-out slugfest when every enemy is just taking round after round after round after round into their head with my sniper rifle. I'm like, guys, this is a fucking chore, and I'd rather be doing anything else. Well, yeah, it just reminds me of, like, playing Destiny and Destiny 2, where you just have this fucking boss, and it's like, all right, I guess I'm just going to stand here for the next five minutes and just keep shooting you in the head, and then when I run out of ammo, I've got to run around, try and find it, and then try and find a safe spot where I can just keep shooting you in the head for the next two minutes. Ah, uh, sucks. Bullet spongy enemies suck. I hate them. It's one of my least favorite things in video games. I have many pet peeves, but that one can kill a game for me. Mm hmm. Uh, Suicide Squad killed the Justice League failing in every way, and then Helldivers 2 coming out a week later as a better game and live service has deserved vengeance for the bat's death. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I feel like Helldivers 2 is what happened, is the way that it should be, which is instead of making your game like it's a foregone conclusion that everybody's going to be interested in playing it for weeks or months, make a game that's really fun, and then see if it gets organic success, even, like, staggering organic success, and then go from there. Well, uh, have have the attitude that you are going to have to earn people's business. Yeah. Make a fun because... game at its core, a game that has just a fun core gameplay yeah. loop. Yeah, and then fun core game, there. good business model, and... I mean, it's, it's, there's a reason why it's so popular, continues to be popular. I'm having a blast with it. I will continue to play it. I'll probably play it later today. I, I really, really like it. They've been doing updates. There's a super cool vibe to it. The community experience around the game has been wonderful. 
it is uh, it is hopefully something that will be looked at by many studios going forward, and you know, they'll be like, oh, maybe there's something to this. I suppose uh, what's interesting about Helldivers 2 is it's kind of, especially in the context of many, 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 many layoffs in the gaming industry over the last couple of months, um, it's... I think Helldivers 2, the studio that made it, it's like 100 people, something like that. So nowadays, that would make you like middle of the road, double A, like sort of middle market game uh, dev studio compared to something like Suicide Squad, which would have been thousands of people. Um, when a game has thousands of people working on it for seven years and then it comes out and it just fucking implodes. Meanwhile, you have a game that was made by a considerably smaller team that makes an insane amount of money and obviously that's a noteworthy example but there are other examples of games made by indie teams or middle market uh like double a teams that find this massive amount of success to where it's i i don't know it's, it seems like the video game industry is probably going to be changing pretty substantially over the next uh few years to decade um it seems like triple the triple a business model is like too fucking risky you can't be spending $300 million on a game and then just hoping that you make your money back, just hoping that your game will actually survive as a live service game or if it's a single player game that it will get enough people to buy it uh, that you'll just make all your money back. It's really tumultuous at the moment, very unpredictable. Spending a lot of money doesn't mean that your game will be successful. Feels like that attitude needs to sort of be realized. Just because you spent seven years making it and like $300 million on it doesn't mean that that will translate to anybody as being more worthwhile to play than something that didn't cost that much money to make. A um, interesting thing, I double-checked, but I, I mentioned it earlier. RimWorld is a game that I think came out in like... I think there was, originally it was a Kickstarter game like 10 years ago. And it's come out... And it is very popular. I love it. Incredible game. It's just about to get its, I think, next month it will get its fourth DLC. I think Tynan said that between 2013 to 2018, he had three developers. And I think in 2020, he said they have seven developers. So yeah, you see even... that sometimes. I think, um, is it Super Giant? The guys, the Hades and uh, Transistor, and the, they're, they're only like 20 or 30 people. Even though Hades is massively successful, they're still and only a small many good team. Things about it, yeah. Team Cherry, same deal. I think they're still like three or four guys, even though Hollow Knight was massively successful. Uh, Moon Studios is still smallish. I think it's gotten bigger, but it's still smallish. Um, because, I mean, something has to change when you start to get to like 400, 500 people. Um, you, you're never going to be the same as if you're like a couple dozen or even, you know, like 10 and how many, developers. How many people does Rocksteady have? Oh, well, that game would have been thousands of people working on it because it wouldn't just be Rocksteady. That'd also be contractors as well, like a whole bunch of them involved. It looks like the base, according to RocksteadyLimited.com, they said we're a game developer with about 250 team members. So it's, it would have been with more than all that. of the yeah, it's obviously with the uh, stuff that they had to hire out and contract work, and that's happening a lot in the industry. The, the industry is really, really healthy. AAA industry is really, really healthy, but everyone's just on contract jobs and not being full hires. It's okay. I mean, I we could see how but, healthy uh, it is now that like thousands of people have lost their jobs in the last like two months. It's yeah. been crazy. I don't think there's ever been a point where the gaming industry has lost this many jobs this quickly all at the same time it's kind of crazy um nature is healing in an odd way uh well it's it's uh it's um it's bad that this is the, the way that it's happening that's for sure uh with just thousands of people like oh fuck yeah see you guys um nobody's hiring right now so that's just a lot of people who are not going to be able to continue working in the gaming industry that's just yeah, a lot of isn't. talent that's lost forever it's interesting yeah they 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 got too big expecting things to stay as they were which they obviously weren't some studios are small and are incredibly successful some studios are the biggest they've ever been as far as i know uh, arena net who makes guild wars 2 the mmo that's just trucking right along that no one ever you know never you never really hear about i think it's the biggest that studio's ever been so it's the the, the gaming industry is full of interesting interesting stories of success and growth and at the same time you know tragedy and shrinkage 
Mm. Uh, hopefully, I mean, all you can hope for is that everyone learns the right lessons from what we've been seeing. Uh, yeah, but I mean, I mean, I mean, who knows? But you never know. I mean, obviously, chasing trends. Oh boy, I'm on the verge of a sneeze. I, uh, I think we're, good. we're good. We're good. Literally, every major publisher has signaled their interest in making more live yeah, service games. Yeah. Even Sony. So, yeah, <laughs> they ain't going away. Sorry. <laughs> They're going to keep trying. You got to, yeah, you got to do it differently. You got to do it good. If if you have live service games like like Helldivers, you know, and even Infinite sort of, you know, to, you know, to its own degree, um, give people a service that they feel like they actually want to play and contribute to. I gave Deep Rock Galactic, I bought all the DLCs for that game because the game said, yep, Here's the here's the season pass. You work through all the rewards, and if you don't get them at the end of the reward track, at the, when the season ends, don't worry. They get added to the general loot pool that you'll unlock through playing the game. And so I'm like, oh, you know, you're giving me a lot of stuff, and like, yeah, I'll buy your DLCs with your extra little knickknacks and doodads. 100%. I'll support you. And it's the same thing with Helldivers. I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll buy some stuff here and there. Make a game. I like it. Yeah. I'm still I'm hoping. Spending... I, I, I ain't giving Blizzard money, you know? Still open for EFAP movies, Batman Forever? That'll probably happen at some point. There's no reason for it not Wouldn't to. Wouldn't be surprised. Oh uh, Suicide Squad Kill My Enthusiasm for Future of Gaming. Gaming Core keeps trying to change more money. Uh, DDLC is free, though. Play it, Dumbos. I thought he was saying that as, like, the title of the game. Ju Suicide Squad Kill My Enthusiasm. Oh, he was. That was, <laughs> that was the, the meme. Joke. Oh, okay. I thought I thought it was Suicide Squad killed my enthusiasm. Well, I said kill. Oh, I thought okay. Well, it's fine. It's okay. Um, dogs meant to have good hearing. I think so. I do have great hearing. I think I got carried away with the little with the joke that ah. I didn't think was a joke, but was a joke. Uh, as a Suicide Squad comics fan, I wish for a game about COVID ops and with the squad's unique abilities, solving action strategy challenges, i.e., commandos. Too bad. You would think uh, like that Travis. superhero games would have, like, as a foundational building block of their gameplay, having each character feel unique because their powers and abilities are unique. Nope. Instead of give everyone a gun, shoot yeah. them. Give them all the exact same way to travel, but, like, slightly different. I found King Shark's way of traveling just to be the most, like, easy and... Like it was just big jumps, right? Yeah. Like Boomerang throws his boomerang and teleports to the boomerang, and then you can do that twice. And it's just like, I don't know, I just want to just let me jump. <laughs> uh, get as on the Actman stream. So first of all, there is no Actman stream, but secondly, yeah, I don't think those true. two are ever going to speak to each other directly. Uh, uh million years. Yeah. And not uh yeah, that would be uh that would be an episode. Uh, Mola, don't forget Bullet Sponge Escort missions. Oh yeah, if I didn't mention that on the episode itself, there's just everyone. You know when you know there's like a type of mission with um, you know, people say escort missions, but what I guess I'm getting at is there is a moment in the campaign that they do everything they can to justify why that's happening story wise, and then later on it just gets thinner and thinner and thinner. So, like the first time, there's this car that has all this stuff in it, and you need to get it somewhere, and it's like oh, people are after it though. Be careful. And then later on in the game. It's like, oh, you got to do this thing. Um, I have a car that needs to go to a place. And you're like, what? And it's like, now you got to defend it. And you're like, oh. Like, and, you know, in every single significant area of the game, you just be like, I also have a car that needs protecting while it goes from A to B. And, yeah, so do I over here, too. And you're like, Jesus fucking Christ. Because you just have to keep crushing it in. Because it's something they built the mechanics for. So just repeat it a bunch of times. But don't do it twice in a row or anything, then players will notice it's repetitive. Gaming. It's the future. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Please thank Wolf for his reading list. I'm crying, Wall. I don't know if you mean you're crying from laughing or being moved by the recommendations, but sure, yeah. Oh, the list was so terrible. So awful. Oh, it could be that. So abysmally bad that they are... Crying. They're weeping. They're weeping. Which I doubt. Extinct animal of the day, the Opabina. The Cambrian mindfuck. Mindfuck. 
Um, oh, this is a interesting looking fellow. Uh, like a concept art. Get a him. picture of it. Oh, gee. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, he's got those fella. five eyes up top, and he's got that little grabber. He looks like a kind of looks like a Pokemon. I think there is a Pokemon based like, after um, uh, this, like not this design specifically, but like the um, Anomalocaris, the guy we saw in the Walking with Monsters thing. Yeah, it looks like something you'd create in Spore. Kind of, it does. <laughs> Spooky boy, get you with that old grabber. Hello. He talks, and his little mouth opens down there. Yeah. Moobla's favorite thing seems to be Buffy. Is there a favorite thing for Ragu and Fringoid? My personal Buffy is Disco Elysium, according to them. So yeah, what are you guys' equivalent? Oh, I mean, no surprise, it's probably like Lord of the Rings. Uh, I mean, I think it would have to be The Simpsons. That would have to be mine. Well, there you go. I don't know, I think I'm... I, I don't know if anything... Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm really not sure. I think I have a good spread of interests and i don't know if anything really super rises to the top maybe the fact that that something doesn't like instantly really come to mind is you know so i mean explains it's it, but. it's high performative hyper inspirational and then plenty good for me to talk about and it just keeps coming back up in my life like it never stops being relevant to me as yeah, a story yeah, I mean, Simpsons is high up for me as well. Um, it was a thread asking what my favorite animated show was, and everyone was, like, discussing which one it could be, and I was like, classic Simpsons. Easy. <laughs> yeah, if you're just restricting it to OG... If, if you start to go, like, totality, then it starts to get a little bit more like, hmm, there are other shows that uh, might beat it out. If, like, if you were to say their, their quality overall... Like, South Park is of a more consistent quality than The Simpsons, I'd say, at this point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. But The Simpsons was really good past the Golden Age. That's, I keep saying it, but it's true. Simpsons were still really funny for years afterward, like well into the 2000s. But part of its problem was that all the episodes coming after it were compared directly to its Golden Age, so it's obviously going to come across as like worse, but it was still better than the vast majority of animated shows. It was still better shows. than what you see in a lot of comedies, the, just the, 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 the amount of the jokes and how clever some of the jokes were. Yeah. But Golden Age is just like unmatched in terms of comedy. True, true. And with that, we are complete on responding oh, to the messages for this episode. Right. So thank you all so Alrighty. much for sending in your, your messages yeah. for the kind donations. Thanks very much. Have yourselves a fine day, afternoon, night, etc. But for now... Every time it is, have a good one. Goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. See you later, everybody. Bye-bye.